In this video, we're going to be going over Chapman's points. Clinically, they're used for diagnosis more so than they're used for treatment. So in Chapman's points, you're finding these palpable uh, nodules that may elicit pain. The first one we're going to look at is the ear. The ear is right on the clavicle, just lateral to where the clavicle crosses the first rib. Right under the clavicle is the first rib. First rib is associated with sinuses. So it goes ear, sinuses, and then in your first intercostal space, which is going to be right there, it's going to be tonsils. And we'll just name this T1. So if you just think from your head outside to the inside, ear, sinuses, okay, that makes sense. What's underneath my sinuses? Okay, my tonsils. And then on the second rib is going to be our tongues. And that also makes sense. We have the tongue is underneath the tonsils, and that's the same way it is in the mouth. And so this one is going to be representative of the T2 rib. Now the next few Chapman's points are going to be right in the intercostal spaces. And we're going to go through them. And these are probably, I would say these ones are pretty high yield. So in T2 intercostal space, you're talking about the thyroid. We're also talking about the bronchus. And we're also talking about the esophagus. I'm just going to write E because I don't have space. Because I didn't really think that through. <laughs> we'll call that the T2 intercostal space Chapman point. So that kind of makes sense. If uh, you're thinking about anything like the heart or thyroid or bronchus or esophagus, these are obviously structures that are more so in the upper part of the body. And so they're at the higher portions of the Chapman's points because you're going to see Chapman's points all over this area. And you just have to remember that the heart is going to be on the left and everything else is going to be on the right. Now T3 and T4 are probably not very high yield in my opinion, but we're represented by upper limb and lower limb. I think some people also like to say upper limb, upper lung, lower limb, lower lung. So that's T3, that's T4. Now if you think conceptually about T5 on the right and T6 on the right, underneath this area is kind of the liver. So I'm gonna write liver over this area because the liver actually takes up both the Chapman's points and the T5 region on the right and the T6 region on the right. T5 is going to be purely liver. T6 is going to be liver and the gallbladder. So I'm going to draw a gallbladder and notice that it's in the T6 space on the right. So if a patient comes in right upper quadrant pain, fever, you know it's the gallbladder that's an issue, not the liver, then it's going to be T6, not T5. But understand that the liver is both T5 and T6. The next one is T7 on the right. T7 on the right is associated with the pancreas. So let's review the right. T3 and T4, which is upper limb and lower limb. You have T2 on the right, which is thyroid, bronchus, and esophagus. You have T5 on the right, which is liver. T6 on the right, which includes liver and gallbladder. And T7 on the right, which is pancreas. Now on the left side, it's a little bit easier. This time we're gonna start at T5. So this T5 on the left is gonna represent stomach acidity. So I'll write acid. So a patient could present with signs of epigastric pain or acid reflux, uh, and they ask you for the Chapman's point. You want to think of stomach acid. You want to think T5 on the left. Now T6 on the left is a little bit different, but it's, a, it's talking about the same category, you know, the stomach and the GI system. And that's talking about motility. Now, just like T7 on the right had something special, which was a pancreas, T7 on the left is going to also have something, the spleen, SPL. That sounds good. So let's review on the left. We have T2 on the left intercostal space. We have a Chapman's point that would be associated with the heart. T5 on the left is acid. T6 on the left is motility. Let me add an O. T7 on the left, we're talking about a Chapman point associated with the spleen. Now there's a couple more that we have to go over, which are kind of easy if you think about it. We'll look at the umbilical region. And when we're talking about the peri-umbilical region, we're talking about the bladder. So if you can picture a bladder right at your umbilicus, which is kind of a weird picture, you would remember that, that the umbilicus is the uh, Chapman's point for the bladder. Now if we go one inch superior and one inch lateral, the Chapman's point associated with these points are the kidneys. And if you go two inches superior and one inch lateral, these Chapman's points are associated with the adrenal gland. And so 
if you haven't noticed, it kind of looks like the structure, just a smaller version of the actual structure in the body, where you have the bladder that connects to the kidneys through the ureters. So I drew in these ureters, which are not real. And then you have adrenal glands that are right on top of the kidneys. So these kind of make sense. Finally, you may get questions that are associated with the colon. And in your mind, you have to think about, let's say these corners were cut off, and you should visualize that the colon, oh, I just got an email, is flipping over such that the top of the hepatic flexure would end up right here, and the bottom of this would end up right here. And so we're just flipping this, it's just falling over. Same thing right here. This would end up closer to the more proximal on the leg, this would end up more distal on the leg. It's probably going to be over here. Now, if we had a Chapman point down here, anterior IT band, but it was more distal IT band, so distal anterior IT band, well, you should consider this part of the colon, the hepatic flexure, because if this were all to fall down, this would fall down further than the first part of the ascending colon, and it would be closer to the distal part of the IT band. Any, pro any uh, Chapman's points on the IT band that are anterior are going to be dealing with the colon. If you ever get questions on the posterior IT band, uh, which I've never seen, maybe once, I don't know. I don't know, but if you do, it has to deal with the prostate.